Do you guys ever wonder if your lawns are thinking about you as much as you're thinking about them? <laughs> I'm so bored. All right, guys, so I could not fit all of the mows that we did yesterday when Tyler started on the first day, just because simply I ran out of time. We mowed that many properties. So I wanna share this overgrown property with you guys. Uh, I believe it's the last one that I have on film. If not, there's, there'll be one or two more after that. And then I wanna come back because I wanna talk to you guys about something that just hit my radar that could really affect our business and also could affect your business to the point where we don't have business. All right, guys, so we got this probably foot and a half, two foot tall left side of this apartment here that we're going to be taking care of. This customer just uh, called us the other day and we're going to be bringing on some more new stuff now that we got Tyler and he's working out. Uh, so he's going to take out back. It's actually a pretty good size field out back. I'm going to mow up here. We walked the property real quick. TQ's out back finishing, picking up trash real quick and uh, looking for like water lines that come up out of the ground. Uh, in our areas, they got these little metal round circle things that stick out of the ground and they take the lids off of them and then they go down in and they can actually shut the water off. Uh, we don't see any on this unit, but I know there is water because there's actually a fire hydrant right up here. But uh, just anytime you're gonna mow something this tall, you wanna walk it first, make sure there's nothing that's gonna destroy your mower. So yeah, let's hop to it. Knocked back into shape, went over it three times, started off pretty much all the way up on the deck, went down to three and a half, and then went back over it at a four. Just kind of working it back into shape. Looks good, looks good. And then there's a huge field out back. Tyler knocked that out. Not too bad, huh? That was a nice overgrown lawn. Whip yeah. back in the shape. I'm glad we got here before the rain comes up. Yeah. Cause that'd be a mess. I'll go back there, Tyler. Anything in the yard? <laughs> what was there? Yeah. Did you hit it? No. No. See, I didn't see it when I walked back there. It was probably down in there cause you already went over it one time. What is it? Just a pipe? It's like a, no, it was, it was a flexible little. So it's not there like no more? No, we threw it in the trash. Okay, <laughs> cool. All right, we're gonna keep on moving on. So Tyler's knocking that side out. And then uh, I guess we're supposed to be taking care of this side. I've never mowed this side ever. But uh, the, na the homeowner came out and said, hey, uh, stop mowing this piece here. Would you mind taking care of it? So yeah, we're gonna knock it down real quick.
wanted to share with you guys about the breaking news pretty much. Uh, this was brought to my attention this morning at breakfast. I wasn't even planning on putting a video out today, but a buddy of mine sent me this link and he said, yo bro, you need to look into this. You might want to share this with your subscribers because this could really, really affect what you do in your business. It's not so much his business. He works at home. He's on a computer. It's not really going to affect him. So long story short, guys, I'll share and I will put down in the description here. This is from CNN Business. CNN Business, Chris Isidore states, coming this summer, gas stations will run out of gas. So Tuesday, April 27, 2021 at 344, he posted this. You can also check it down in the link and uh, read it yourself. Uh, it says, New York CNN business. Millions of people stuck at home for more than a year expected to hit the road uh, for a much, much needed post-pandemic vacation this summer. Good luck finding your gas to do that. Not that there's a looming shortage of crude oil or gasoline. Rather, it's the tanker and the truck drivers needed to get the gas to the stations who are in short supply. According to the National Tank, Dr Tank Truck Driver carriers, the industry trade group, somewhere between 20 to 25 percent of trucks in the fleet are parked heading into this summer due to paucity of qualified drivers at this point in 2000. At this point in 2019, only 10 percent of the trucks were sitting idle. So if you guys can imagine right now, 20 to 25 percent of trucks needed to haul our fuel to our gas stations are sitting parked. They're just sitting there. OK, they can't get qualified drivers. They can't get people to deliver the fuel. So that is just all kinds of bad news, guys. And I'm not trying to wig you all out. I simply share this stuff like I did over the summer about there being a mower shortage, fuel, uh, fuel oil uh, filters, all that stuff being a shortage. It's just simply we've used up now everything that we had in storage and it's becoming super hard to get new stuff. So uh, me being a businessman, I wanna share this with you guys uh, because this could really, really affect things, guys, moving forward. So let's continue reading here. We've been dealing with a driver shortage for a while, but the pandemic took that issue and mastercized it, said Ryan Strabo, the executive vice, pe vice president of NTTC, certainty has grown exponentially. Indeed, drivers left the business a year ago when gasoline demand ground to a near halt during the early pandemic-related shutdowns. So basically, last year, guys, when nobody was driving, everybody was at home, not doing anything, those truck drivers couldn't deliver any fuel. So what did they do? They went looking for another job, just like anybody would that wasn't working. So uh, now, this is really affecting them. So where did a lot of them go? It says in here, I'll just kind of glance through here, uh, a lot of them went to hauling boxes for Amazon uh, just just to keep our drivers busy. Sean Boy just got home from school now. Can you can you go real quick, buddy? I'm just going to make this. You want to say hi to everybody? Hi. He just got home from school. So uh, it says uh, they went to deliver boxes for Amazon just to keep our drivers busy, said Holly McCormick, vice president in charge of driver recruitment and retention at Grier Dyke Transport in Oklahoma uh, Tanker Company. A lot of drivers didn't want to do the safety protocols. We are also with an aging workforce. So a lot of truck drivers are a little bit older and they just, they didn't want to deal with the safety protocols. They don't, you know, uh, they didn't want to do it. Many said it might as well take it as a cue to retire. That's not good. Not just any truck driver can be allowed to drive a tanker truck. It requires special certification, including a commercial license, uh, weeks of training and weeks of training after being hired. And while the jobs are more attractive than other long haul, long haul, long haul trucking jobs that can drivers that can keep drivers away from home for days or weeks at a time, it is strenuous, difficult work. McCormick, who runs the Workforce Committee for the NTTC, said another problem was the shutdown of many driver schools in the early pandemic. The pipeline of new drivers those schools would have produced has yet to be filled, she said. So basically, all the truck driving schools, when they shut down, they weren't training anybody. So you have a natural uh, occurrence of people retiring, the workforce dwindling. Normally, you need to refill those spots with new people coming into the jobs. Well, with schools being shut down for truck driving, you know, uh, they no longer have those truckers coming in to start driving. Uh, and there's also a new federal 
clearing, clearing house that went online in January 2020 to identify truck drivers with a prior drug or alcohol violations uh, for failed drug tests, which knocked about 40,000 to, 40, to 60,000 total of drivers out of the national employment pool. So they started the new drug testing and immediately that disqualified 40 to 60,000 total truck drivers. That's nuts. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't want anybody on drugs or alcohol driving my fuel around. You know, that's that's a kind of a bomb. You know what I'm saying? In normal working times, driver turn turnover can be around 50% on an annual basis, but that spiked to roughly 70% annual rate uh, in this past April of last, or yeah, last year, April of last year, according to Brad Ful Fulton. Uh, Director of Research and Analytics at State Metrics. I'll tell you what, man, that seems kind of high, doesn't it? Average turnover is 50%. So that basically says every one out of two drivers that you hire are not going to make it. That's crazy. Uh, I lost my place here. Analytics State, at State Metrics, trucking, recruiting, and retention firm. Many of the drivers who hired on tanker carriers last spring when the pandemic first hit left the field relatively quickly. So even the people that went into that field that just graduated school didn't continue into it. They left it. They were out. Uh, many of those jobs and in industries such as construction, which has been booming over the last year, I don't see, man, that's crazy. I understand construction is booming, but with the, the wood prices and stuff like that, I could see that uh, starting to really deplete here real soon as well. Tanker operators raising, raising pay to fill their driver seats and raising the rates they charge customers accordingly. I have to double my recruiting budget to get the same number of drivers, uh, said McCormick. Uh, Jeff Leonard says this is just gonna have a ripple effect on everything, basically. So yeah, guys, I just wanted to share that. It goes on and on and on and on, going into total, all kinds of different stuff, percentages, uh, just all kinds of stuff in here. I will post that link down here, but uh, I wanted to hear from you guys what you think, because if we run out of fuel, that's not good, guys. We need it for our mowers. We need it for our trucks. Uh, you know, we need it for our handhelds. We need it for everything. That is our livelihood, okay? So... I just wanted to share it with you guys. I'm not trying to freak anybody out, but I just like to share information with you guys that, you know, if something there, if there's something you can do to help your situation long-term that you can do now, I don't know if maybe getting fuel tankers at your property would resolve that getting fuel delivered. Uh, you know, I know like oil pump Dan, he gets, I think like 250, 500 gallons brought to his house. But how long would that even keep you going, you know? Because I know how much fuel we go through. Uh, you know, even at 500 gallons, that maybe save us a month. So uh, not good, not good at all, guys. Drop a comment down here. Let me know if you guys think it's just more pandering to try to keep people, uh, you know, upset or whatever. But I just wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, some mowing at the beginning of this video. We will be back at it tomorrow. Like I stated, it is raining, raining, raining like crazy. Oh, yeah. See my Ballard hat, guys? Links are always down in the description if you guys are ever interested in anything we use or anything that you can save money purchasing. Uh, a lot of the links and stuff that we do, guys, uh, is simply just to save you guys money because who doesn't like saving money? I'll tell you what, anytime I buy something, first thing I'm doing is searching Google looking for a discount code or you know something along those lines. But uh, yeah, we'll be back at it tomorrow. As always, keep mowing, keep growing, keep making money, boys. We'll talk to you later. TQ out. Peace. Bye.